that clock a little. I'd like to call this November 5th meeting of the Cookville City Council to order, please. Can we have a roll call? Councilman Anderson. Present. Councilman Shelton. Here. Mayor Salee. Present. Vice Mayor Davis. Present. Councilman William. Present. All present. All right, thank you, Kathy. If we could all rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Right. Mr. Shipley, do we have any additions or corrections to our agenda? No changes. Seeing no changes, do we have a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion or second. All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Brings us to the old business portion of our meeting. We have one item. Item two, consider approval of the minutes of the council meeting held October the 15th, 2009. Do we have a motion and a second to approve those minutes? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by the council on the minutes? It's a pretty thin meeting with uh, Councilman Shelton and Williams absent. We certainly glad to have you all back this time. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no further discussion, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Uh, on our consent agenda, we have three items. Item three: consider approval of purchase of used exercise equipment with a grant funds from the fire department. And item four: consider awarding bids for luminaires and transformers, the electric department. And item five: consider awarding bids for facility cleaning services at the, um, I believe this is the Water Quality Center. Water Quality Control. Uh, so do we have a motion to approve consent agenda? Move for approval. Do we have a second? Second. We have our motion a second on consent agenda. Any, any items need to be brought forth for discussion? Seeing none, all vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Now to the new business portion of our uh, meeting tonight. We have item six, consider awarding bids for the Dogwood Park Fountain Plaza with the Leisure Services Department sponsor, Mr. Rick Woods. Rick. Uh, Mayor, members of council, we, um, as you know, we've been in the process of uh, doing design work and uh, our next phase of Dogwood Park expansion and development. Real exciting project for us and we're happy to be at that point. Uh, we did receive a grant from the state of Tennessee, a $372,000 grant, which must be used solely for this purpose, for the uh, upgrades to Dogwood Park. Um, and so we're really <coughs> pleased about that, and that's um, uh, something that uh, will help us tremendously uh, develop this park. Uh, as our first phase of this development, well, not the first phase, but the, the, the next phase, the first aspect of the next phase of this development. Uh, we have bid the central water feature um, that will go in the park. Uh, we advertised and received bids. We had uh, seven bids. Um, and unfortunately, all of those bids came in um, considerably higher than the money that we had budgeted for this. Uh, with that in mind, we, we looked at it very carefully and talked to uh, <coughs> suppliers and, and providers and went back and, and spoke with all of the bidders to confirm their numbers. Um, I think that we can make a few modifications to our specification, um, and I think if we reject these bids at this point and rebid this project that we might get a, a little bit closer to the number that uh, we had budgeted. So I would recommend at this point that uh, we reject the bids and re-advertise and re-bid this project. 
All right. We have a recommendation for the rejection of bids. Do we have a motion and a second? A uh, motion to um, reject and rebid this project. Second. And we have a second. Uh, any discussion by the council? I'd like to uh, recuse myself from the bids, uh, from the vote here because in the discussion because of my company uh, that I currently am employed with is a bidder on this project. So. Thank you, Councilman Williams. Um, <coughs> any other discussion about the, the motion? Will this be re-advertised and yes. opened back up um, so everyone will have the same opportunity they had before to bid? Yes. Sir. Anyone new, um, they can pick up bid packets here at City Hall. Yes, sir. What, what will be the time frame on that? Uh, we haven't determined the exact time frame yet. Um, we're looking at, at considering putting the irrigation, and we need to do some more evaluation. Okay. Uh, putting, possibly putting the irrigation in with uh, that bid package. And so. As an alternate. As an alternate. Right. A and we want to make sure that we have good specifications on that irrigation system. So it, it, that, sh that will go out within the next two weeks, okay. certainly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, we certainly hope we don't discourage anyone from <coughs> bidding on this project because of this. I, I think um, <coughs> particularly with the as tight and lean as a budget that we have to operate with, according to the powers of Mr. Shipley down there <coughs> and Mike Davidson, uh, we are pretty well held uh, to a very tight budget, and it's just unfortunate that we can't go ahead and do this, but hopefully we'll save some money and, and get, get some good good return on our investment there well definitely I um, this is a disappointment to me because I really want to see this come to fruition and I know it's going to but I'm um, just like everybody in the community I'm anxious for it to start happening even faster and but then on the other hand of you know we're spending a lot of money and we're building something to last for a very long time and something that is going to help put and keep Cookville on the map and we definitely want to do what we want to do and do it in a manner that is affordable to us and so um, you know I just didn't know what fountains cost <laughs> I'm just hopeful that it sounds like there might be some engineering design changes in the, I mean, as far as the equipment that might bring down the cost in the new bids. Is that what you're hoping for? That's the indication that we've gotten from, from fountain suppliers. Okay. All right. Is there any other discussion by the council? Well, I think we're all just sorry that we, it didn't go through this this cycle, and, and certainly we hope uh, that it will straighten itself out and that we can really act upon it very soon. But, um, we, I guess we have been lucky with rain that the grass is looking rather thick over there. I hope it stays that way. Any discussion from the <coughs> audience? Any comments? One more important point to make and he alluded to it, but, but these are monies that uh, through the grant that must be spent within the scope of this project. It's not new tax money or tax money or money that's coming that will create a tax burden. Um, alternately, it is actually um, grant funds that, that f have to be funneled into this project only, and that was the reason the uh, grant was awarded, correct? That's correct. All right, so just just point of that's clarification. A very, very good point. And, and this is what, was this an LPRF grant? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Local Parks and Recreation Fund. All right, very good. Any other comments? Seeing no further comments, all vote. Four yes votes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Woods. One abstained. One abstained. Yeah. Item Thank you. Item 7, <coughs> consider approval of purchase of one tow motor for the gas department. Sponsor, Mr. Mike Davidson. Mayor and council members, <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> uh, there's another slide. Who is that? I think Who is that? that? <laughs> 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 I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> I'm not sure. Just say, moving right along. <laughs> Glad I've got good friends here at the city. Uh, I'm requesting authorization to purchase a used tow motor for the gas department. This is a budgeted item. Uh, the tow motor we'd be replacing, it's 30 years old. Oh. And uh, we've had it. Uh, it was actually bought used by the gas department in the early 90s. 
and we found this one locally. Uh, it is a used motor, tow motor. We actually went to one of the auction sites in Nashville trying to just see what they had and didn't find anything down there that we thought would meet our needs. We've had the opportunity, opportunity to test drive this one, if you will, for the last three weeks in the warehouse, and it's, we think it's well worth the money, and I'd request uh, your approval. All right. Thank you, Mike. Any, do we have a motion and a second to Move approval. Second. Or a motion and a second. Discussion by the council? Certainly, you got your money's worth out of that other one. Yes, I think we have. <coughs> but the money set aside in the budget is at or less than the amount that this. We actually total. budgeted fifteen thousand. We weren't sure, so it's eighty nine hundred. Okay. Right. Can what? you can you drive it with flippers? <laughs> 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 Was the uh, we're, we're, what, what was the, the what's the estimate on like a new machine comparable to this one? What, Twenty thousand okay. dollars. All right, very good. Any other discussion? Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, use your flipper and vote, please. <laughs> Five yes votes. Motion <clears throat> carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Item 8, consider authorizing the Electric Department Director to execute an agreement with the Tennessee Valley Authority to provide for participation in an in-house energy evaluation pilot program. Sponsor, Mr. Tony P. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I was hoping there wasn't a picture going to show up there. <laughs> <laughs> if I may, let me give you just a, a little bit of history as a brief, as, as brief lead-in to this item. About two years ago, I was asked to serve on a uh, Tennessee Valley Public Power Association Energy Efficiency <coughs> and Demand Response Committee. And uh, uh, it's been pretty rewarding working on that. And uh, our initial charge was to find ways that our customers could save money through energy efficiency. And, and you may remember over that period of time I brought a couple of other pilots to you. One is a green power switch, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Another is generation partners for the wind and solar. And then we had a demand response pilot program that you approved. That was the Internoc folks that would look at businesses here in town that might be able to shut down certain portions of their operations at certain time and be paid incentives for that. All three of those are up and running and working quite well. Uh, this is the fourth, uh, and it is an in-home energy evaluation pilot. Please remember, this is a pilot. It's constantly moving around. We're trying to perfect it, but I did want to offer it uh, to the folks here in Cookville. Uh, I think a lot of people may uh, may want to take advantage of it. I am for sure. Uh, basically, uh, uh, it is to provide the home homeowners who have a desire to make uh, energy efficiency improvements, the information and incentives need to move them toward doing that. Uh, a little bit on the program description. It is a whole house evaluation by a trained professional. It's going to cost about 150 bucks to have that done. Uh, they're going to look at all your ductwork, your insulation, windows, everything in the house, give you a detailed report. And the beauty of it is the things that they point out in that detailed report, if the homeowner elects to do those, and the example I give here is, let's say the homeowner does $150 worth of energy efficiency improvements. Not only are we going to give you your $150 back that you paid for the evaluation, we're going to pay you 50% of the improvements that you made up to $500. Uh, there is some financing available for this, should anyone need it, through Regions Bank. I think it's going to be about 6 or 7%. Again, uh, as I said before, this thing's moving around a little bit. Uh, but the homeowner must select either to take the incentive option or the financing option. I, I think 99.9% .9 of our customers will probably take the incentive option, you know. Uh, <clears throat> The improvements, uh, one thing that is required, there, there's a quality contractors network and a, and a lot of our local folks are on that, in that network. Uh, the work has to be done by a QCN member to assure that, you know, the quality and those kind of things are being met. And uh, TVA will require 100% uh, post-improvement inspection, which I think is fantastic. 
once you have these things done, there's going to be somebody back out there looking to make sure they were uh, completed properly. So with all that being said, uh, I'd recommend your approval. All right. Thank you, Mr. Peake. And I would like to make that as a form of a motion that we accept this and move forward with this. Second. Thank you for the second. And discussion by the council? Will the will uh, citizens of Cookville call the electric department to set this up? They would have to do that? Or, or do you even have all those things? We're still working okay. on that. Uh, I think the way it's going to work is somewhat going to be a turnkey operation as far as we're concerned. TVA has contracted with a group, uh, Conservation Services Group, I think is, is their name. They'll be coming in, performing the inspections, talking with the homeowner. They're going to keep us in the loop, basically. And uh, we'll be doing uh, a bit of advertising. Should you... Uh, approve this, uh, we'll be doing some advertising and letting the homeowners know what to do. If they call us, we're going to give them, you know, we're going to give them a number to call. Mm -hmm. And when, when would this start? Uh, you have a date yet? Probably uh, in the next couple of weeks, if not sooner. Mm -hmm. It comes at a good time, I think, with winter. I mean, fastly on top of us here is people trying to save um, energy cost. I think this might be a good way to you know, weather stripping or, you know, better windows or whatever it might be or a better new door or, and I'm sure there's exactly. a whole host of things. Will there be any kind of uh, benchmarking as far as if this is the customer's current electric demand and we, we do this project on a house and then we come back and compare? Uh, yes, sir, will be. Okay. On all the pi pilot programs, there's benchmarking taking place because once the, once the duration of the pilots are over, the, the committee that I'm on are going to choose the one that we roll out as full-fledged programs okay. to the whole Tennessee Valley. Very good. So as a portion of the scope from this contractor's network, when they come back and do that 100% post-improvement inspection, they're actually going to look, are they going to wait long enough where they can look back at utility bills or usage and things like that to see how efficient it was? Um, I'm, I'm assuming they will, Ryan, yes. I think that post inspection really is just to make sure that the stuff's put in right, then TVA is going to be monitoring oh, okay, okay. this stuff for some time to come, dur the whole duration of the project. Yeah. Very good. I, I would encourage people to really take advantage of this. Are, are there limitations on the number of folks that you can have participate? There is not. The more, the merrier. Jump right in there. Is there any recommendations <coughs> of like uh, that, that you think of that, that would be You'd certainly strongly suggest that they take advantage of this, like the uh, age of the structure, uh, the size, the square footage of the house, or something that you and your discussions in this group, they strongly recommended and, and felt <coughs> like it would really, really see a big difference. I think any, anyone that, uh, that knows there are a few things, like uh, the mayor pointed out, you know, some weather stripping and some things like that need to be done. Uh, I, I think that's a group that's being targeted. Uh, myself, you know, I've been needing and, and been putting it off a heating and cooling uh, in, inspection. You know, you're supposed to have that done annually, and I've been needing to do that. That costs about 75 bucks. So when they do my inspection, if they find a little weather stripping and a little caulking and stuff that needs to be done, I'm sure I'm going to get up to a hundred and a half. So, you know, I, you know for 300 dollars, I'm I'm going to give them 75 bucks. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Sounds like a good deal. It does. Hopefully, yeah, we encourage folks to to participate in it. P comments, Mr. Pat? <coughs> Mr. Mayor and uh, members of the council, Brian Paddock. I uh, actually was part of a stakeholders group that uh, of. Uh, uh, organizations concerned with energy efficiency and conservation. We actually had an independent briefing on this program from uh, TVA and they spent uh, hours explaining to us how they had come to this design of the program. Um, and uh, I would just make the comment, two, two comments. One is that the state of Tennessee from the federal government has received a lot of weatherization money, which actually uh, is a much deeper subsidy, does not require an upfront expenditure, does have before and after uh, assessment of the home and, and whether the work is done properly. And that's for uh, elderly and uh, low-income people. 
and I would hope that the Electric Department would coordinate uh, with the uh, Human Resources Agency that's going to be administering that to make sure that people who don't have to don't have the ability to put up that 150 up front or shouldn't have to under that program will go ahead and take advantage of that federally assisted program. The second thing is that many of us in the energy efficiency uh, advocacy community are concerned that TVA has chosen a model um, where this is strictly an eyeball walk-through inspection and that often does not identify the most cost-effective energy improvements. Uh, sometimes they're obvious, uh, but things like a blower door test where you actually detect leaking ductwork and uh, other leaks uh, in the uh, building envelope and the HVAC system uh, can be much more effective. And TVA specifically decided that there were, uh, it was not interested in, in at this point doing a pilot with blower doors that those things do cost more to do an initial assessment, but I hope that out of this we will find that the next generation of experiments we will actually go in and, and find, uh, use blower doors and otherwise find the most cost effective kind of uh, energy efficiency improvements. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Paddock. Right. Any further discussion by the council? Any further comments by the audience? Seeing no further comments, I'll vote. Five yes votes, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Pete. All right, that concludes our regularly scheduled business. And at this time um, at our meetings, we always have a hearing of citizens indoor delegations, and we allow folks to come to the city council uh, room. And um, we do have a few empty chairs this evening, so we would encourage those in the community to come out and join us. Uh, if anybody in the audience has any comments they'd like to get up and say, uh, share with us. We'll give you up to three minutes. And while, yes, sir, if you'll just come to the lectern and um, just identify, just let us know who you are, please. Yes, uh, my name is Bill Abbott, and I live at uh, 410 Charleston Drive. And uh, my wife and I purchased a home uh, about a year ago and we've had uh, water problems ever since we moved in. Uh, there's been total non-disclosure on this home. Uh, I did not know that there was like uh, over 50 loads of fill dirt uh, put in over a swamp area uh, or a uh, flood zone area. We're finding out now that the area we live in is um, a very high water table and um, um, there's been a lot of mold under the house uh, which has caused me to have problems with my breathing. Um, and uh, we've had uh, Mr. Brown Mr. Shipley, they've been out. They have um, done, uh, Mr. Brown has followed this up real, real well. And uh, he has had uh, surveyors out. And we find that uh, Mr. Dietz, who originally owned the property, and he had sold a lot of these lots to builders. And I find that um, when they were putting the footer in at my home, they had to have a pipe uh, draining the water out of the footer. And uh, that's really after the fact, after I bought the house. And I find all these things uh, that went on that, uh, again, we have a non-disclosure for the, the builder, a non-disclosure for the realtor, and a kind of a non-disclosure for the city because I had asked for a PERC test. Um, I am not a, um, I'm not an engineer. I'm kind of a school of hard knocks and I've learned a lot through the years. Uh, I'm 72 years young and I, um, I think I've been kicked around here a little bit. And uh, uh, I thought I'd come to you people and have you look at some of these, if you would. I have some pictures that I've taken out there. 
And um, I did do a, a lot of legwork uh, in our community, and I wish we had more people here. If we had as many people as I thought we would, we'd have filled up every seat in here. But you know how that is. Um, but they've all got wet problems too out there. And uh, we also have a street that's uh, uh, about 16 feet wide, and I don't really call that a street. It's 16 feet wide. And we have cars and trucks going down through there, and I'm still amazed that they don't run each other off the road. And we have an open ditch on the one street that is totally open, and that's where we're getting all this, the lay of land I find that uh, as far as the Nazarene church coming back our way uh, south is all downhill and all this water comes down in our area. And I've got three people that have lived in that area for 35, 40 years and they remember right where my house is, which I get the brunt of all of it, is that they remember that being a swamp way back when. And I've had more people tell me, well, uh, especially the, the, the realtor, well, and uh, they've sold real estate here for 30 years. Well, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> and I can't hardly believe that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm bringing it before the board here that, uh, uh, oh, and one more thing is Mr. Dietz uh, must have known something about the water out there because he asked the city to put a pipe through my front yard which is about a I don't know 20 inch pipe something like that uh, and run it underneath uh, the uh, castle street underneath the street and across and uh, we're finding now now he got permission now I don't know who watched this being put in but Mr. Dietz this was his idea to put that pipe in. Well, now you don't just put a pipe in for nothing. He knew that all this was a wetland down through there, especially my lot. And uh, but he still sold those lots because the city let him sell those lots. And so um, I don't know who to blame here, but I know uh, I've got uh, several several dollars sitting on that lot that if I wanted to sell that next month or next year uh, I couldn't tell somebody all the problems that we've had and not tell them before I tried to sell the house now would any of you panel would you any of you buy this house I don't think so and I worked uh, 50 years to be able to afford to buy a nice home like this and uh, I'm just really uh, perturbed at uh, and but we love the area we love the people around us we, we love the city we're from a little town in Frankfurt Indiana and we're farm kids and that we thought that this was the place to live mm -hmm. but moving in here is has, has, has really been tough on both of us and I, I appreciate you listening. Well, I appreciate what, you. Would you want these and pictures? If you could bring the pictures to our, the attorney down here on the end. He'll pass those out to us. We'll take a look at those. And I certainly Thank you. can Thank you. say that we are all very sympathetic to your situation, and hopefully we can get something happening for you. Any Anybody else have any comments? Just You can go to either lectern. is fine. Just identify yourself. My name's Karen Hatcher. I live two doors down from the Abbots. I'm on the 16-foot wide street, uh, Castle Drive. Um, we moved in maybe three, four months before the Abbots, and we love it, except when it rains. Um, we get a literal current through our backyard that heads in the direction of the Abbots' home, where, where Charleston and Castle meet. And in the last three months, we've gotten four sinkholes in our backyard. Uh, when it rains and the waters rise, uh, you can't see the road in front of the houses, uh, that the new build next to us, and, and almost to where Castle 
rises up to old Kentucky. And we were just wondering, my, my husband Robert and I were just wondering if there were any thoughts on um, expanding the drainage, um, possibly widening Castle Drive. Um, <coughs> having walked around during some of these storms down, I think it's Campbell and the next street. Uh, it, it seems the water really does just cascade from the Nazarene Church through, through people's backyards. And just wanting to let you know there's more than one family out there that's very concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. These, these photographs say quite a bit. Does anyone else have any comments? Yes, sir. Go ahead. My name is Todd Webb. I live at 430 Charleston Drive, and I've lived out there for about seven years. And the problem has really been exacerbated over the last year and a half. And there's been a lot of new construction going out there. And I don't, I'm speculating, but I wonder if the infrastructure that was built there to accept this water with all the new construction has um, <coughs> overloaded it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, but I certainly would like you know somebody from the city to check that out okay. you're saying the construction within the development itself yes. or somewhere further up within the development okay. okay very good thank you any additional comments yes ma'am well i live on eastwood drive in the back of my house is on castle drive so I get water too, but it starts in uh, across the street from me, and there's a drain under the road that uh, used to take the water, but now it don't. It backs up and runs over the road <laughs> till the drain where it starts needs to be cleaned <coughs> out and all down through there because it's all filled in is another reason that it floods all the yards so bad. Okay. Ma'am, what was your name? I'm sorry. My name is Flo Rich. Flo Rich. Okay. Thank Where you, Mr. Rich. What drain, what street was it under? The drain is on Eastwood Drive. What, one question, Mr. Have, um, is this something that occurs uh, under general rains or, you know, the, are we talking, I mean, we've had a lot of hundred-year top rains in the last little bit. I mean, the, my neighborhood, uh, Forest Hills, uh, have ha I've had in my backyard, you know, some unusual things. So is this an unusual occurrence or a commonplace occurrence? Well, it's unusual for a stream of water to look like a, a, like a small river along between your houses. I, I, That's when we get the big rains. Uh, I, can, uh, I have dug down two holes in my yard, front and back, and if I dig down a foot, I hit water, and that's my table water, and when the when it rains, just a natural rain, my, my yard stays wet for a week or two weeks, I can't even get into it. I wasn't minimizing your problem. I, in my neighborhood, I, I, I've had the situation where my yard looks this year three or four times like it is never in seven years that I've lived there, you know, with a stream. And I, I wasn't minimizing what your issue is. I was just asking if it, if it takes a huge rain like that or if it is something, you know, just a, a normal, you know, one-hour rain does the same thing. That was what I was asking. No, not, okay. not, a, not an hour. Okay, rain. okay. Uh, but, <clears throat> Problem exists. We are low in that. Right. Mm -hmm. But the ditch on Castle Street used to be about two and a half foot deep, and now it's about twelve to fourteen inches at most. And when they when they say a hundred year, uh, you know, they they give it a hundred. One guy said one hundred fifty years. Well, the way it looks, the way the water that we're getting. Uh, looks like the warming trend is here. <laughs> I never really believed that that much, but uh, uh, we can't say a year, five years, ten years down the line that we're, we're not going to have this again. Oh, sure. Because yeah. We, yeah. Had, we had three. We've had three, three huge ones, yeah. And uh, uh, September and October. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what Councilman Shelton was discussing. He, he's just stating that 
theoretically and statistically, you would only have this one rain event one time in 100 years. Well, but and, and what he's saying is, is if it's happening, and it's happened at all of our homes, we yeah. all live in Cookville, we're seeing these 100-year rain events more and more. So on the, from a plan, I'm the planning commission member, we're looking in our comprehensive master plan about reevaluating some of these things. Yeah. And we're looking at sinkhole studies and where the water is going and things like that. So we're researching these things. What we're trying to find out is sometimes they are cyclical. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and based on what we're hearing you say is, yes, it's gotten wetter over the last year and a half. And, and it may be because we are having larger rains and there is more uh, development there than there has been in the last three or four years. So the combination of both I think is what you're seeing but if if someone uh, like Miss Rich no. if, you, if you would come up to the lectern there would be great sir and just identify yourself Ron Gilbert um, my house is, I built my house there about four years ago on Charleston just down the street from Bill um, I probably bought the lot about five years ago uh, probably took me two to four weeks to decide on a lot when I was going through and at the time I was in there the house Bill's living in now wasn't there as long as about four or five other ones in there and in the two to four weeks that it took me to decide on a lot um, just driving by once a week and you know just looking and try, just trying to decide um, I noticed that water in his lot and you know and we had the chance to buy that lot ourselves and I mean he even offered it to us at a good price but when um, I noticed that the water was puddling up in that and that's not just from this year I, I'm, you know I, I know how the bad the rain's been this year but it's been like that for the whole entire time I've lived in that subdivision there's uh, of course when there was no house there there was there was I mean good wade puddles you know two foot deep in there <coughs> and, and it didn't take a, it didn't take a big rain it, just a normal light rain that would be consistent for you know four or five hours mm -hmm. was enough to fill those puddles up so you know it's definitely not the the big storms that we've been having this year which keep in mind they were worse because of one of the pictures that you have there i mean it just looks like a river and you know in the past it hasn't looked like that river during normal rains but there was still plenty and it goes into the next lot over to him i'm not sure they just finished the house there they're just about to finish the house there um, I'm really hoping they do good groundwork there when, when they, they finish the yard there because that might affect Bill too, how that works out. I'm not sure, but that's been a water issue ever since I lived there. And that Castle Street, it just floods out when, you know, we have a nice thunderstorm or something. And it don't take long once we have a good thunderstorm. It's probably about an hour. In my estimate, that road starts flooding. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, with kids in the neighborhood, you know, they're more likely not out in the rain, but, you know, one runs down the street, you know, and somebody, probably, you know, slides to that water. You never know what's going to happen. Right. Um, the, um, and I saw the, the, uh, the uh, real estate agent that come in. I mean, she's pretty well known. And, uh, and she's been all over this county. I think she should have enough sense to know what she was building on there. And uh, as far as the builders that she had, they should, you know, they should be, somebody dropped the ball here. Those houses should not have been built there and, you know, passed off to the uh, potential residents without being told what was underneath there. And, you know, I, I pass by his house every time it rains and, you know, I just pity him every time I pass it. You know, I was fortunate there was enough lot selection in there that I got up on the hill back behind the Burger <coughs> King there. So, you know, I'm not affected by the rain like all these other people is, but mm -hmm. I see this stuff daily any time it rains. Yeah. And you know, I thought I need to come down here and just tell you what I see, even though it don't affect me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it'll affect me in the future because mm -hmm. I'm up on that little hill. But uh, we got a problem there. Something needs to be done. Yeah, and, you know, somebody like really dropped the ball <coughs> in the beginning, whether it was a home inspector that should have been picking that out or, mm -hmm. or you know, the city or whatever. But somebody dropped the ball. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Gilbert, for your comments. And, and um, as um, Councilman Williams spoke of, I mean, we with the Planning Commission and floodplain maps and and our sinkhole study, which is still not complete, I don't believe that we've gotten that back yet from Tennessee Tech. Is it come back now? It back. We just got it back. So, you know, as as our town grows, and one of the things that we have, and I know uh, Mr. Pack and all of us are aware of it, is our sinkholes and how important they are uh, to the natural drainage of this area. And, and uh, 
but as we grow and particularly as, you know as areas that are foliage grass and trees are cut down uh, asphalt and things don't absorb the water quite as fast and uh, we end up with more runoff and it, you know it's hard for it to deal with but there's clearly a problem there and Mr. Paddock yeah, yes, Mr. Mr. Abbott contacted me uh, several weeks ago, and I went out and visited his place. Those photographs you have uh, were taken by him on July 28th. The date is not on the front of the photograph, but I looked at the uh, digital camera data as I printed them, and um, um, there's actually about three dozen more that show various aspects of the same problem. Um, I talked to Ken Morgan the wetlands specialist at Tech. Ken has been out and looked and there is an, there is an impermeable layer um, down below this, this area and there after you get down about six or eight inches of fill there is the gray re reduced soil that is um, typical of a hydric soil of a wetland. Um, Ken told me this afternoon that he could not tell you how long that wetland had been there, uh, but as we talked about it, um, it seemed to me at least that historically that area has been a wetland uh, and it hasn't been created simply by the hydration of those soils since development. Um, now, Mr. Abbott's house was built only two years ago and um, and he's developed this and unfortunately I think if the city goes back and really tries to re-engineer the storm drainage there um, why it's going to be a, a, been a rather expensive proposition as you can see some of the storm drains are actually above the level at which at grade level in terms of of where the ponding uh, starts and you do have these extremely heavy flows uh, by the way just that that hundred year way we have conventionally refer to these things actually it's it's um, it's probably more accurate to refer as a one in a hundred chance each year <laughs> kind of remind you that it can in fact happen any year there's no guarantee that there's going to be a hundred year interval as somebody pointed out we've had three now in six months and I would also point out that with respect to trying to solve this problem uh, without having to go back and re-engineer all that storm drainage um, why uh, Mr. Abbott insisted that the contractor come back and uh, try to deal with this and a French drain was actually installed around his house in March of 2009 and the pictures you're seeing are from July so you can see that the effort to drain around the footers of that house and keep him from being flooded and his crawl space from being flooded and as you can see new construction was occurring um, in July and up to this day, and I was out there just a, just last few days ago, I can't remember, it was just three or four days ago, um, and uh, they were finishing a house right next to Mr. Abbott's house, um, and the workmen were there uh, caulking the windows on the outside and, and finishing up and so forth, and there was a complete pond in front of the house where the living room and the parking area would eventually be. People are buying these houses without disclosure and not realizing the risks and um, it seems to me that, that both the re-engineering evaluation for that drainage and uh, something to do some consumer protection uh, in that area is in order and I would ask the council to put this on their agenda and on their scope and, and maybe ask Mr. Brown to come back and tell us what can be done about it. Okay, thank you Mr. Pettick. I think we'll certainly have to dig into this a little further. Uh, yes, Mr. Abbott. Uh, there was one other thing that I should have brought up. Uh, I asked for a perk test, percolation test, and uh, I was told, that, and this is this is the rule, is that they don't do percolation tests here only if you're on a septic tank. And uh, my thinking on this is if a percolation test had been done on my lot, that house would never have been built because the water just doesn't perk. And I wouldn't be in the fix that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. So again, who, who, who do I blame? I, mm -hmm. I Very good. Well, there are definitely some good comments and thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yes, sir, if you'd like to come to the lecture. My name is Chris and I live 
um, same subdivision, Charleston Place. And we are just building a house over there. I haven't finished my house over there. I live in all the way in the back side, you know, where the 111 is, you know. But I see that that picture was, you know, that's the time we was started building a house. And a contractor, even though I cannot go in that, my, my car, I cannot get it in, in the 16 feet wide street, you know. It's, for him, it's a lot of pro problem too, but we have same problem too, because when the water filled up, we cannot go in our house too, you know. Mm -hmm. So you need to definitely think about that. The street is only 16 feet, and we cannot see even that time with the water, road, nothing. So we might be going near his uh, yard. Mm -hmm. So please uh, think about something, you know. Very good, very good. We'll, we can definitely do some checking on those things. <coughs> I know the street in front of my office is about 14 feet wide, I think. <coughs> South, that would be 250 South Franklin, Greg. <laughs> Um, any other comments from the audience? <coughs> any further comments from the council? Um, don't. I, I can assure you that we will revisit this issue. Uh, it, you know, this the first we're hearing about it. We'll certainly have to do a little research and, and speak with our department heads and do some uh, get gather some information, and then then we will be talking about it again. But thank you all for coming. Do we have any announcements, Jean? Um, I think so. <laughs> Alma? Um, I'm going to start a litany starting now, the 1st of November. I'm going to encourage everybody in the city of Cookville that as you get ready to shop for Christmas, Please spend your money here in Cookville and um, keep it local. And um, I personally have been very tempted by the internet, but I know that I can get <laughs> what I need right here in Cookville, and in and I intend to make an effort to buy every bit of my Christmas, do all my Christmas shopping right here in the city of Cookville so that my tax dollars go back to the city of Cookville. And I'll be saying this until Christmas on this forum, and I think the rest of the council agrees with me. We try to keep the money local. Absolutely. Thank you, Councilwoman Anderson. Uh, I have uh, done a little proclaiming this afternoon. I had uh, This is uh, National Hospice Month and National Home Care Month. But I also have a proclamation here that's been brought to us by the uh, Clean Commission. And uh, November the 15th, uh, mark your calendars, I believe that will be a Sunday, is America Recycles Day. And uh, I'll just read a little bit of this proclamation here. Over the past 15 or more years, Putnam County's had a tremendous increase in recycling in Cookville, Allgood, Baxter, and Monterey. The increase is due to overall population increase and efforts by the residents, businesses, government offices, and schools to do the right thing and conserve, conserve our natural resources. Uh, America Recycle Day is recognized nationally and dedicated to organizing Americans to recycle and to buy recycled products. Uh, the campaign began in '97 and uh, is a program of the National Recycling Coalition, a nonprofit organization with memberships of professionals, businesses, and advocates from all over the United States. Uh, the leaders of this community, uh, city and county, this is a proclamation signed by myself and the county executive, Kim Blaylock. Uh, we encourage people and groups to sign pledges to be good stewards of the environment, plan events, and rally around the importance of recycling on this day and every day. And we want to, people to become more informed about the importance of recycling and buying recycled products and if you haven't recycled, take this day and recycle for the first time. Um, one of the things that comes to mind when I think about recycling, I know uh, I certainly wasn't around back during the uh, 40s with uh, World War II, but having done a lot of research on my grandfather's service in the, in the Army during that period, anybody that does any research about World War II will see these. They had these posters, bring in your scraps, bring in your medals. It was the American thing to do to recycle and to, to support and to save our natural resources and not be so dependent upon other places. And there is, my, in my opinion, folks, there is no time better than the present to recycle. And when, when gas prices go to $4 a gallon and a plastic bottle is made out of, of old petroleum product, 
as consumers, we can control the supply and demand uh, equation by recycling, putting that petroleum back into the recycling bin and drive down the cost of oil. And we can do it right here in Cookville, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that said, uh, I'll, uh, with no further comments, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved.